Welcome to Slam Day in the Life of Miller Lee. And, oh, what are you doing, boss? What are push-ups? That's 450. All right, let's go. Y'all follow me. I'll take you through my routine. This is where all the magic happens. I get big in here. I practice my swing in here. This is what just everything goes on in here. Sleep in here. Sleep is important. I'm going to take stuff off and show you what a workout with me looks like. Workout with a Vanderbilt commit. Hey man, wake up. Oh, good morning. Let me show you what I do day to day. Wake up. First things first. Gotta get swole, gotta get big, okay? You don't hit 450 dingers like just sleeping all day, okay? 4.15 a.m., rise and grind. All right. All right. Now that that's out of the way, just one rep, one rep a day. Keep the doctor away, you know what they say. All right, so. I take my bat bag with me everywhere I go, because you never know when you just might like roll up on a batting cage or something. Always be ready. It's wooden bats only around here. Boys, come on, follow me. Bro, don't tell me he can't see us. Yo, what is he doing? Oh my goodness, bro. Oh hey, there, man. Not next time, all right? All right, anyway, guys. So uh, usually right after I get one rep of workouts in, I come in here. Brush your teeth, that's always important, all right? Next. You know what I gotta do, man, come on. All done here. Let's get outside. This is my redheaded stepchild. His name is Jonathan. He's always in here playing Fortnite. 4.15 a.m., man, playing Fortnite still. Have you even slept tonight? No. No, he hasn't. He's unhealthy, man. 4.15, rising ground, baby. I'm about to go outside and get a workout in, all right? All right, let's go. Welcome to my natural habitat. Follow me. Guys, these are uh, Miller's hey, man. training rocks. Hey, man, this on me a little bit? Sorry about that. revolve around you, bro. Pop in one of those. Let me show you what they're for. So... As a Vanderbilt commit, they always want us to stay sharp on our skills and just quick reflexes. So I'm gonna be practicing my swing. As you see, it's dark outside, 4.15 a.m. Rising grind, baby, all right? So here's a little swing. For people ask me a lot, do I always wear my sunglasses even at 4.15 a.m.? Absolutely, dude, I'm a Vanderbilt commit. Come on, all right? Here you go, though. Here you practice that swing. As you can see, I just jacked that one way over. Probably anywhere from 475, 500, 515, 600 feet. Uh, that's just what we do around here. Yeah, go ahead and toss another one. I'm good at catching those. All right, here you go. I'm probably gonna lay down a bunt this time. Easy base run, dude. Base bunt, right down third base, right where they can't get it. Uh, so. I'm probably gonna track this one. Actually, I'll probably just show my pitching skills a little bit. Right down the pipe every time. Really nobody hits off me. Uh, I've had 13 perfect games now. That's how Vanderbilt came after me for pitching though. Actually, come over here and we'll tell you a quick story. So, I'm going to be telling you all my D1 story about how I am, where I got today. Like, just my whole story through from birth to now. Who always helped me out. Um, first, I'd like to thank my coaches, my Nemo, and... And God, I couldn't be anywhere where I am today without any of them. So thank y'all. All right, so let's hop right into it. So coming out of my mother's womb, I was born with a Wilson glove on my right hand. As um, soon as I got out, 
dad threw a pitch. I caught it, and he knew, like, he knew instantly. He said, like, my son is going to be a baseball player. And, you know, I don't really remember all that, but I do remember catching that ball as soon as I came out. Um, so that's when I actually became catcher for the local rec team, and I was actually catching. Um, uh, pitcher was throwing kind of hard. You know, we were 8U runner-ups. We didn't ever win the championship or nothing. Um, so after that, I went on to middle school. Uh, actually played left field in middle school. Uh, nobody really ever jacked them out there to me, so I'd really kind of just – put an extra ball in my pants and just throw myself lobs, just pop flies and stuff. Practice calling like mine, 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 catching it. Um, just kind of stuff like that. Maybe look at some flowers, pick your nose. You know, left field is a pretty boring spot. Uh, so I played left field all through middle school. You know. So after middle school, I joined my first ever summer league team or travel or, you know, so they were called the Green Tractors out of Michigan um, you know I'm living up here in Delaware at the time they're asking me to guest play move to Michigan and stuff and uh, and you know we'll, we, we moved three three state champions uh, back to back to back three Pete we were untouchable and at the time I was actually moved to DH. I didn't ever play the field. I just cracked juniors a lot. Um, I was the biggest one on my team. Uh, hit hit them all. I hit when I got a hold of them. I hit them hard. That's for sure. <sighs> Get some water. Here. So three peak. Like I said, um, three in a row, baby. We were we were pretty nasty. Um, Uh, that was probably the prime of my career at the time. Let's say I was what, 13, 13 till 16. We we kind of just took over the summer baseball league in Michigan. Uh, um, that's when I got my first college offer from Appalachian State in North Carolina. And, you know, they had a good baseball team, but, you know, just not the one I was looking for. Not for me. And that's when uh, Northern Louisiana Central offered me. And then Vanderbilt, you know, the school of baseball, college baseball. If you know college baseball, you know Vanderbilt. Um, so that was like a dream come true. Uh, so, I mean, it was kind of a hard decision between North Central Louisiana State, but... Ended up, as y'all know, committing to Vanderbilt, and uh, I broke both of my big toes. Uh, that put me out all four years of college. I was helping Mima at her house. Her refrigerator had a leak, had a big old wrench, crank, crank, crank. All of a sudden, dropped it. I don't know how it happened. Uh, shattered both the bones in my big toes. Almost fainted. Um, I knew instantly I'd never be able to walk again. Uh, that was a pretty devastating injury. Uh, shattered both the big toes. Doctor said you can't play baseball. You can't run the bases. Like you're not gonna be able to run at all. Uh, you can't run to the grocery store. I mean, etc. Just stuff like that. That was an everyday part of my life. I love baseball, um, but I overcame. As y'all see, a lot of people ask me about my cleats. Why I wear these type of cleats? It's because of my injury. Um, they're actually spikeless cleats. Get a good shot of them. Uh, actually made by Columbia, the professional fishing gear. Um, they're real cool. Got marlins. Got marlins on the. Can you see these? Marlin right here. Uh, Columbia actually sent me these recently. Um, just trying to break them in. Uh, they have like great support on the other parts of my feet, all other eight toes. You know, four four. Y'all know the deal. Um, so actually, so where I am today, a lot of y'all may be wondering, you know, if you were out all four years of your college, how are you committed to Vanderbilt, okay? I'm actually currently 49 um, as a freshman at Vanderbilt. 
Uh, there was really no competition for me. Uh, I've stayed in shape all these years. Um, get up the plate, crack a dinger easily. Uh, a lot of the rookies come in thinking they're hot crap. You know, they throw heat, heat. You know, nothing for me really. Uh, all the young bucks in here. Um, you know, they think they're all the hot stuff, thinking they can run up into college, take all my girls. You know, um, I'd say I have anywhere from 16 to 27 girlfriends at the time. Uh, currently, I think currently I'm at like 23. Uh, it's just kind of like a door-to-door -door thing, you know, one night of the week for each one. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It's a different single one, and we just rotate out. Everybody gets their fair share of the 49-year-old freshman. Um, so I actually have seven children. Uh, they're all with their mother. We actually got a divorce when I was 33 and still trying to overcome my injury. She said she couldn't stay with me through that, um, which I understand. She actually has full custody. Uh, it's tough, um, but it's all right. I'm moving on. I'm trying to pursue my dreams of uh, being a professional baseball player in the MLB. Um, the Oakland A's been looking at me, Rockies, uh, Yankees. Um, and a quick story about the Yankees. Uh, as you can see, the 2000 World Series champions. You can see me right here as a young kid watching my favorite players on the Yankees. The Yankees are my favorite team. Um, so it'd be a dream to sign with them. Uh, so yeah, you can see me right here. I'm wearing this brown sleeveless shirt. Back in the day, I used to like to show off some cannons, you know, sun's out, guns out. So here I am right behind home plate. we got great seats. Uh, you know, just enjoying, enjoying being a kid, man. Just wanting to play for the Yankees. Uh, so yeah, I'm hoping to just pursue that. Just sign with the MLB team. That'd be my dream. We are back here with Miller Lee. Um, we will be doing a question and answer here with the three-time state champion Vanderbilt commit. Yes, sir. Um, so back in your day when you were 27, that's right. Um, can you take us through the day and uh, the specific wrench that had that fatal impact on your baseball career? <laughs> All the fans out there, it's kind of a touchy subject for me just because of the impact it had on my life. Um, just like, I mean, it was one of the worst day of my life. Uh, but yes, like I said, I was at my Meemaw's house. Um, she lives up in north northern Michigan, small town. Um, refrigerator had a leak. And, uh, you know, I was the man for the job, she thought. I had no idea how to work a refrigerator, how to fix a refrigerator. Uh, so I just, I told her I'd come up there cause you know, that's my Mima. Uh I told her I'd come up there and take a look at it. I get up there and um, it's going good. I, I, I thought I was fixing the leak uh, and I had, was fixing it with the wrench. And to answer your question about the wrench, the specific wrench, always carried around with me just as motivation. Um, it's called a C wrench. Uh, this thing thought it ruined my life. Thought it put me out of my favorite thing to do in this world, play baseball. Uh, just the stuff that this thing thought it did to me. I carried it around uh, as motivation. I take it to my games just so it can watch and realize that I'm still who I am and who I want to be. Um, I put it in my bat bag. It sits beside all my free bats I get from Vanderbilt. They take good care of us. Uh, and it's just sitting there thinking, like, dang, I thought I ruined his life, but I didn't. So, uh, I'm surprised I got through that without crying, honestly. Uh, so, next question. All right, question number two. Besides baseball, what are some of your favorite hobbies? Um, great question. Uh, some of my favorite hobbies include building Lego, uh, Lego Star Wars. That's probably one of my favorites. Um, and just watching movies with my dog. Next question. Um, and third and final question. Yep. Can you tell us um, one, along with their names, one uh, interesting story about all of your ex-family members? So the question was, tell a story about an ex-family member. 
Yep, as in my wife and uh, kids. We need to know their name and yes, um, I heard you divorced. Is that right? Right. Um, so just one, one, uh, one interesting thing that really brings you and connects you to your uh, of course, of course, of course. All right, so I'll tell you a story about my oldest, Jonah. Um, he was actually. he was nine at the time and uh and he was trying to steal the family dog uh you know I, I caught him like he put him in a bag took him to his closet and was like trying to keep him there and even worse he was trying to feed him cat food he was trying to feed a dog cat food um you know just no right human being in their mind would do such a thing uh it, it honestly disgusts me you don't feed dogs cat food um, he had like old spam, like canned spam. He was gonna feed him, um, you know. And that's when I took him out back and I wore his tail out, uh, swooped him with the belt, um, my baseball belt, my Vanderbilt belt. Uh, had a V on his left butt cheek. Uh, it's probably permanent. It's probably still there. If y'all can get up with him, Jonah. Uh, that story was for you, man. I miss you. Love you. Um, there y'all go. Um, I know that I, uh, that I, um, that I, uh, um, I, I, uh, you alright, son? Um, it, it's just a crazy opportunity to, to, um, be here with a, uh, a, uh, 40, um, nine year old freshman, um, committed to, um, Vanderbilt. Uh, I know that we said three questions, but we would, um, like to, uh, um, we want to do a bonus question. Um, can can you hey. tell us? I, I know that back in two thousand four, hey, I think. Man. Hey man, just calm I, down. All right? Okay, I'm just a human being, just another guy. All right, just another guy. All right, face. all right. Um, so I know that it's you. Um, uh, that you got arrested back in two thousand four. Two thousand four. Yeah. Um, in Jackalowin, Delaware. Correct me if I'm wrong. That's right. That's my hometown. Um. Yeah. It was at a Kmart. Kmart. Kmart, okay. Kmart, right out of the Jacqueline Plaza Shopping Center. Plaza. Is that right? Yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Go ahead, Andy. Here, I'll, yeah, I need the mic. Um, so, yeah, 2004, um, another really rough year of my life. One year after I shattered both my toes. That was in 2003, of course. Uh, this is something I didn't include in my, my D1 story about my life and stuff just because it's a touchy subject. Uh, it just wasn't a good example of me. And just not a good look for all my fans out there. Uh, so 2004, Kmart in the Jacqueline Plaza. Uh, this this hot shot came up to me, just threw a bag of mulch at me, like playground mulch. Um, I actually, luckily, always have a pocket knife on me. Caught the mulch with my pocket knife, slit the bag open, and it spilled everywhere. And I ran. And as I ran out, I yelled, clean up on aisle six. Um be like at the end uh it was a bad word the i word um can i curse on this um this is going to be a uh, I, uh if not, e yeah, for everyone so i'd, I'd rather you not but if you have to go for I it i said clean up on all six idiots uh ran right out the store uh framed framed the guy for spilling the mulch um jacqueline uh police department instantly on it uh did three years in the slammer. Um, that's uh, it was a bad time in prison. Uh, I came out a better man though, so that's what is important. All right, we all three here. Thank you. It's a pleasure, man. It's a pleasure. Yes, sir. It's a great one. All right, so I'm gonna run y'all through some of the drills we have. Uh, the players, as myself, do here at Vanderbilt. Um, I'm just gonna stop talking and we're just gonna hop right into it. So this drill is actually to improve your your lead. Like when you're about to steal a base, like, okay, it's actually to get yourself better. Always improving on something. You can do this at home, improve for your rec league, your high school team, middle school team, you know. All you need is some off bug spray. So, what you want to gonna, you're gonna, let's say you get a little object that you can call first base, and let's say that's second base. So, what you're gonna wanna do, spray. Slide and smell. You want to try to smell out the bug spray and get right where it is. Um, this will just help you and just improve on leads. Uh, you just, you, let's say we're going to do it from second to third. Here we go. You're going to want to go ahead and get in your 
knees locked, get in your position, arms out. Go ahead and give it a spray. You want to just slide and snip. It's not nothing to it. Y'all can practice that at home. All right, um, just another hobby of mine. I like to collect sneakers. Uh, I'm a big sneaker head. Um, so I'm just going to run you through some of my favorites in my collection. Right here, kind of my beaters. Uh, I painted these a lot. Uh, you can see got a lot of paint on them. Um, size nine. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt. Those are actually the shoes that you were wearing while fixing the uh, refrigerator, right? They were not Columbia shoes, but also I keep these in memory. I'm with Columbia now. I'll go ahead and peep my cleats one more time. All right, back up here. It's all about me here. Um, these are just not Columbia shoes, so I don't wear them anymore, but they're in my collection just as a reminder of that day. Um, next one, these, these are the Columbia 7s, uh, all black colorway. These things are nice. Nice grip on the bottom, nice comfort. Uh, just an all around good shoe. Last but not least, uh, these are my brown flip flops. These are also Columbia. You know, I'm signed with them, I only wear Columbia. Uh, they sent me these just the other day. Some of my favorite flip flops I own. They're real cheap, real affordable, uh, all brown colorway, and just a good every single day shoe. I wear these with jeans and jean shorts, so. Well, it's been real. I hope y'all enjoyed the day of life of a Vanderbilt commit. Um, every night before bed, I just have a simple bed routine. Just take my bat bag off, uh, take my rings off. Um, I do sleep in a hat and sunglasses. Uh, and so, I'll have to see y'all later. It's been real. Blow me out.